So thanks for joining us today. I am with Cynthia. Hi. Cynthia, you reached out to me a year ago, over a year ago, I wanna say like a year mm -hmm. and a half ago. And um, you're watching my channel and you wanted me to help you uh, look for your brother who was out there on the street mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, but then you mentioned to me as well that you had been yeah. uh, out in the street. You were 20 years old now? Yeah, I'm 20. And how old were you when you started uh, using blues? I was 16 when I started smoking. How did you, who introduced you to them? Uh, my brother. I started smoking them with my brother. I tried them for the first time when I was 15, actually. I remember he's like, oh, try this. Like, I didn't think it was anything. I hit it. I remember I threw up like hella times. And then I never really got into it. And then like a year later, he was still smoking. And I remember like the day I got addicted to Eric's, like uh, vividly. I went over to see my brother. He was hanging out at this trap house by m my dad's house. And I went over there. He was smoking with his friends. And we were all supposed to go to dinner at my dad's house. And we never made it to the dinner. We just like, I went in there, he gave me a Zan. And like, I had done party drugs. And like, that's how I grew up. I dropped out of high school when I was 14. And I was just doing party drugs, smoking weed. Like I wasn't, I was a bad kid. For sure was a bad kid. And I just like, I tried the Zan, I was like chilling. They all started getting high and smoking the perks. and. I wanted to try it too and I was like I didn't think it was like that bad I didn't think I was gonna get addicted I didn't know like what came with smoking perks and all the trauma that would come with it so like I just asked him and he's like he let me buy some and I was smoking it and I just remember like nodding out that whole night we never made it to dinner my dad calling us like all mad and it's just all a blur from there I smoked for two weeks straight with my brother and then I tried to stop I was like, I was out of Eric's and I, I got them for $2 from him. There were $20 a pop at that time. I tried to stop and I started like feeling all this weird, like weird. I didn't know what was going on. And I went to sleep because I thought I was just getting sick. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning. My legs were killing me. Like I couldn't move. I was shaking. I had cold sweats. And I was like, what was going on? And I was like trying to do research and I was like, damn, I'm, I'm withdrawing. And like, I called my brother and he's like, damn, saying like, you're withdrawing. Like, you, you want more? Like, you want more? And, like, I didn't I didn't want to smoke at that time because I knew, like, my dad had been calling me for those two, like, two weeks, like, where are you at and stuff. And I was like, I was going to try to get clean. I was like, okay, I'm only two weeks in. It'll be fine. I can do it. I went home that night. I remember the look at my dad's eyes. He's like, what are we going to do about the perks, Cynthia? Like, what are we going to do? Because he had lost his son to it, too, and I was his baby, and, like, I felt so bad and I just went in my room and I still had an arc left and I smoked it, I smoked it. And like, that was when I was 16 and I didn't get off until I was 19. And just like, just remembering that first time and knowing like how my family knew what was gonna happen, you know? Just, you mentioned yeah. that you were a bad kid. Um, was that just rebellion? Was that dysfunctional I mean, family, trauma, or just you? All of it together, I think. I um, I grew up like kind of, I want to say a rough upbringing because I had a roof over my head. I had food to eat. I had like my dad, he was a single parent working three jobs and parents got divorced. So I would say it was dysfunctional. My dad was working hard trying to support three kids and you can't really be a parent to three kids while working 80 hours a week, you know? And I looked up to my brother, he was my best friend. Anything he did, I was doing it. That's why I started getting into weed younger like I was smoking weed and my brother was smoking weed it was like it was a normal it wasn't anything that was like not normal to me and I got into high school and I just didn't fit in with people I was already smoking weed in high school I went to people were like not into that so I was a bad kid and I didn't fit in with people and like I dropped out because I feel like I didn't want to be like like that you know I cared too much about what people think I spent my whole childhood caring too much about what people think how did you get clean? What happened? Did you go to treatment centers or? So getting clean was definitely a process. I went to treatment multiple times when I was younger. Went to Aurora, I think like three times. I got arrested. I was in there. And then I went to like a behavioral health center for three months to try to get clean. And I mean, I did good while I was in there. I didn't, I didn't smoke, obviously I couldn't, I got out relapse right away it's just I didn't want to get clean I didn't have the want to want to do better I just I wanted to keep like up my life I guess I didn't see like hope 
and I just was like, I'll just keep smoking and I got arrested again because I was on probation. They locked me up till I turned 18. Day I turned 18, they released me. I went home, overdosed for the first time. And it was on my 18th birthday, I remember very vividly. And I kept smoking after that. Overdosed for the second time two weeks later at my mom's house because my dad had kicked me out. Because when I turned 18, he was like, you're not my problem anymore. You haven't gotten better. Like, I love you, but I'm not going to sit around and let you do this. So kicked me out, moved in my mom's house, kept smoking, overdosed, and kept smoking, obviously. It didn't matter. I didn't care. I was just like, it's whatever. I didn't think anyone, like, really saw what I was going through. I feel like I was crying for attention a lot of the times. Like, I wanted people to see the pain I was going through. And like my mom, she didn't even realize I was getting high. Like she didn't, she was concerned about her own life. And she, I just was so surprised she didn't know. And then I just came one day and she kicked me out. And she's like, you've been getting high in my house. And I was like, damn. So I was on the streets, kicked me out. And I had to see what I was gonna do. And I was like talking to my friends, you know, I was gonna get sober. She's like, you can come to my house. So I told her like I was I was sober and I was gonna go stay at her house. I was not sober. I went to go stay with my brother for a little bit, mo bought more pills off him. And then my friend came and picked me up, went to her house and her family took me in. I'm, I'm so grateful for the things they did for me, but I completely disrespected them. I kept smoking in their house. I didn't get sober and they were about ready to kick me out too. And then I met my ex and he saw something in me that like a lot of other people didn't. I felt like seen for once. He wanted me to do better. He saw me high and he's like, you're, you're too beautiful for this. He took me in and he let me stay at his house. I detoxed, he bought me food, he bought me clothes, he took care of me. And like, I just, I changed after that. Like, I didn't want to do bad anymore. Something clicked in me. Like, I just felt like maybe this is what I needed all along. Like I needed my whole family to completely disown me. None of my family would talk to me and my friend was about to kick me. I was really about to be on the streets and I just knew I needed to change my life. So that's what people would call tough love. Your family yeah. just basically disowned you, right? You yeah. go do, I'm not gonna watch you kill yourself. You mm -hmm. go do it on your own. That's tough love, right? Yeah. That's what some people call tough love. Did that work for you, you would say? Um, In the beginning, no, it didn't. I think like I felt like my family wasn't doing enough for me even though they were sitting here putting me in rehabs trying to talk to me trying to like tell me to get better like I broke my grandma's heart like she didn't want to lose me like they felt like they had lost my brother at that point too because he was all strung out like they didn't see hope for him and since I was so much younger like they didn't they were like kind of not having hope I felt like and them not having hope like made me kind of not have hope even though like I didn't see all that my dad had done for me till I got older. Like my dad put in a lot of work to try to get me into these rehabs and to try to like get me into treatment programs, try to get me in therapy. And I just, I didn't take it and it worked, but it also hurt me in a lot of ways too. Like I still feel like I lost my childhood. Like I lost things that I could have built with my family. Like I was gone for three years from 16 to 19. Like. That's like a big part of your childhood. You grow who you're gonna be as an adult. I missed homecoming. I didn't get to go to prom. I didn't get to like have my first car experience. Like, and it's not that I want like, that really changes anything, but it's just like, that's a normal life. Kids like learn, like want, you know? That's a normal life. And it's just like, it just didn't feel normal. Like I lost my childhood to a little pill. I chose everything over this little pill. I would not change for this pill and it, it destroyed me. Um, but you're not destroyed right now. Yeah, uh, you right. overcame your challenges and that addiction and congratulations because a lot of people, I've been mm -hmm. talking to them for years and mm -hmm. they, they that click, you mentioned it, it, something just clicked. It does. It, it hasn't clicked for them yet. Mm -hmm. But there's hope, right? There's always there's hope always for hope. recovery, right? Um, what are you doing now? Well, I did get on the Vivitrol shot, which helped me, like, I believe, stay sober. When I got sober back April 10th, uh, 2020, 
I got onto the Vivitrol shot. It's a, I don't know if you've heard of it. You get it once a month and then you're not able to smoke and you're not able to get high while you're using it. And I was on that for a year. I took that every single month and I feel like that really, really helped me stay sober because I get cravings every day. I still have cravings to this day. I'll admit it. It's not like I'm sober and everything's better because like it's something you will fight for the rest of your life. And if you let it become something that you don't like stay on top of, I feel like that's how people fall and like you have to realize that you always will have an addiction it's always going to be something you're fighting every day it's not going to be something that just goes away because like I mean I've been sober for almost two years and I still get cravings so I mean it's just it's about like the one I I pray to God and I put all my faith in God and I ask him every day to keep me safe to help me fight this addiction and I give a lot to God too because I really feel like he's helped me so much and like giving my all to him and just praying and just knowing that there's a better life for me. Um, again, that, that's amazing. Uh, you're putting your thoughts and efforts in something else other than the pill, the way mm -hmm. you used to in the past, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're working now? Yes, I'm working, which actually helps me motivated too. Like making money, it's like, I don't want to say it's like a drug because that's not something good to refer to, but it is. It's like, it's like a dopamine serotonin i don't know which one it is but gets you going it makes you feel good like doing something for myself makes me feel good i have my own apartment i'm working like i have a puppy like i'm making a life for myself and it feels good like i look in the mirror and i'm finally learning to love myself i know who i am i'm becoming a woman and i'm not the little girl strung out on drugs anymore i'm, I'm a person i feel like a human again and it feels good uh again that's beautiful because there's a lot of people out there that have, don't have that confidence right they've lost that confidence they've mm -hmm. lost themselves deep deep in addiction unfortunately that confidence is a big thing too though because i think people like they care too much about what other people have and i know like when i growing up i always en i envied a lot of people because i didn't have what they had and i thought like like i just was gonna be better. People would like me more if I had nicer clothes, nicer shoes, like I lived in a nicer house. Like I cared too much about what people thought. And even being high, I was like, how am I ever gonna get better? Like, I'm so strung out, I have no money, I'm I'm skinny, I'm sick. Like, how am I ever gonna get better? Like, how could I ever get to the point of being better? I just it didn't seem like something I could see in like my lifetime happening. But I think I just finally stopped caring about what people thought and I did a lot of things that my family didn't approve of, like getting sober, I was with people my family didn't like, like my ex, they, they didn't like him, you know, and I, I went through a lot of troubles with my family still getting sober, we are just now finally getting back in the past two months into a real relationship and it takes time and you have to realize that all the time you wasted on drugs is a year of working hard to get back to like a good life really that bad i spent three years all strung out so the past almost two years that i've been working hard to get sober is that is that really still bad all the time i lost like i lost my childhood and i'm like i'm fighting to get it back to all the young 14 15 year old cynthia's that are at home they're rebellious the, the <laughs> their home is not the best home life they they don't know who they are low confidence what, what can you tell them about these pills or if somebody offers them something? I would say just don't think about your family. Think about me. Think think back to this video and think like what I'm telling you. It's not worth it. The pain that it's going to bring your family, the pain it's going to bring you, the traumas that it will cause in your life is just not worth it. These people are not your friends. They're offering you these pills because they're probably addicted to them you know like they're not your friend they're not looking out for you and um just worry about yourself go to school go to school everyone who told me to go to school i thought they were crazy i didn't want to listen to them go to school that's my biggest advice go to school worry about yourself like just don't get caught up in like all that bullshit, like that people try to put on you especially in arizona like i've seen like 13 year olds selling drugs like pills over in El Mirage, and it's just crazy like those are little babies. Like, I want to take them all in. Like, I want to help them. It's not fair. Like, there's resources out there if you try. There's programs. There's places for kids to go. Like, you just have to look and, like, don't fall into the statistics. You don't have to be like everyone else. If your family's caught in the like, my brother was on it, and I fell into a statistic, and I don't want to, don't be like that. Be something better, 
and worry fight for yourself fight for who you want to be there's so many young kids who have all these dreams but they feel like they're never going to be able to get there and i promise you just put in the work and you can get there a beautiful message what about parents for a mom a single mom at home single dad at mm -hmm. home what can they be doing How, what, i was actually thinking about this too um for parents you need to listen to your kids look out for your kids I felt like I cried for help to my parents so much and they didn't hear me. My dad was focused on working, trying to keep a roof over my head. And I mean, you can't blame someone for that, but really think about your kids and what they're going through. Like when they're not sad and not talking to you or if they're lashing out, really think back and what, why are they doing this? Are they hurting inside? Because I fought with my family a lot because I was hurting. I was like searching for attention that I didn't get. and. I just feel like maybe if parents tried to not like punish their kids as much and like talk down in their kids as much and try to loving approach, yelling and screaming doesn't get you anywhere. Talking to someone, just like telling them you understand them, letting them know you love them and reminding them every day how much you like care about them can really change like someone's viewpoint and perspective on life. Uh, that's a really good point. Cynthia uh, unfortunately you missed out on your childhood but it sounds like to hey, me there's, there's always more there's better you know it sounds like, like to me that as you grow mature into a young woman things, yeah. when you get married and have your own children you're gonna be a great mom you. because you're gonna know what to look for you're gonna know how to love mm -hmm. them that love that you didn't receive yeah. right so yeah. um, congratulations on not being a statistic right mm -hmm. overcoming your obstacles and challenges and this video at least one person out there you're going to save somebody's I, I life i want to absolutely I, I would love to help someone i want to help people like knowing i was a little girl who felt like she didn't have anyone to help me and i didn't know all these resources were out here maybe if i knew about the vivitrol shot sooner like i could have got sober sooner because i felt like i couldn't stay sober for that long i couldn't fight those cravings but it, it helped me like if I knew those resources were out there if I knew like there was more people to talk to if I knew there was like people out there going through the same thing as me like maybe what if I wouldn't have felt so alone I wouldn't have tried to put my all into a pill you know when I interview some of these folks um, I see some of the, some of those traits low self-esteem lack of confidence uh, dysfunctional family nobody at home telling that they're they're worthy of more, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're missing that for whatever reason. And whose job is it? Is society, the school system, is it family, friends? Whose job is it? Is all of us? It's everyone, it's for sure everyone. Like everyone needs to go out there and do your part. Like you're doing your part too. You don't have to be lost in Phoenix, you could be found too. You know, like there's, there's people out there who want to see you do good, but there's also people out there who want to see you do bad. There's always going to be people out there who envy you. There's always going to be people out there who want to see you do bad, but there's always going to be people out there who want to see you do good. It's like vice versa. You just have to find your people, find where you fit in, and you have to make sure you're surrounding yourself with good. Like if you're surrounding yourself, people are using drugs who are not wanting to do better in life. To, that's probably where you're going to end up. You're not around good energies and the world is built off energy. And if more people were putting out good energy into this world, I feel like things would change. What does your future look like? Sober, not relapsing. Um, I want a family. I have my own apartment, but I'm looking to get my house. Um, I want to help people out there. I want to help people who have been through pain like I have, who I've like been struggling with addiction. I want them to know that there's help out there. There's people out there who want to see you do good. Like, I wish I could just help everyone and like, I just want to take them all in and let them know. I want to give them all the Vivitrol shot. And I just want people to get better. Like, I hate walking around and seeing people out on the street, like all strung out and like my friends, people I love, like killing themselves. Like the man I loved so much is killing himself. He like, he didn't want to get better like no matter how much love no matter how many times i told him he loved me how many times i cried to him i begged him not to get sober i watched him almost overdose and i had to save him from overdosing and i cried to him and i told him don't do it to me again he looked me in my eyes he told me like baby i'm not gonna do it again i'm not gonna do it. i got you like i love you it's not gonna happen again next day come back he's smoking it's like 
it's just you have to know when to say goodbye to people too you have to know when to put yourself first because at the end of the day not everyone's gonna want to get better that's just you you're gonna want everyone to get better but there's gonna people be people out there who are just not ready and you have to know when to say this enough is enough you have to separate yourself and you can love from a distance and i've seen it firsthand my family loved me from a distance and you know it did me good because i'm here now and i'm alive and i'm breathing i just hope and pray that i can do the same for him you know like he did for me i think it's amazing that you didn't fall into that trap right mm -hmm. and become a couple that are you know living that life so together. lucky so lucky that didn't happen because i knew if that happened one of us probably would have been dead or both of us and we wouldn't have survived that i just how toxic we were like even fighting with just him on the drugs it was just i knew i didn't want that life for him i want it. i like just like you said something clicked like nothing in me wants to go back to that like everything in me wants to do good like even when i have the cravings like it's like 30 seconds snap like okay but think about my life like look at my puppy looking at me right now look at like the clothes on my body like the food in my pantry like i don't want to get rid of it all for a pill and i don't i don't know how like i i think i can just to give it to god again i prayed a lot during those times and like when all this stuff was happening i kept asking to keep me strong and he did he kept me strong and i'm just going to continue praying for everyone around me and hope he keeps them strong too that's all we can do sometimes but uh keep going down the path that you're on you seem like a extremely strong willed individual that doesn't want to fall back you want to help and lift mm -hmm. people up I do. so i admire you i'm proud of you, thank you. um i want to say thank you very much for reaching out to me and meeting me and thank you for helping our community it really means a lot i have a lot of people like even that i know like look at this guy like he's telling people stories like isn't this so crazy like this used to be you guys i have people in my family like this could have been you on the street cynthia and like i hope now they can see this and like they have hope too absolutely yeah. you're giving you're sprinkling hope out there right for a lot of people and at least one person is gonna and if i can just save one person i would i feel blessed you know it was you know it was worth it right it was, it was worth, worth it. sharing your story because a lot of people don't are don't want to relive that they but... don't see that there's hope out there they don't know people that get sober when i was so when i was wanting to get sober i didn't know anyone who got had got sober and like i haven't known anyone who's gotten sober and stayed sober i'm like as everyone I know, I'm the longest person. I know myself is to be the longest person sober. So I hope I can inspire people and start showing them like there's a life out there. And like all these young girls, it's not worth it, baby girl. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Um, we'll do another update in another six months to see how you're doing. Hopefully right? way, way better. See how your ex is doing. And I'll let you know the messages that we get and you know mm -hmm. how people want to continue to hear from you and watch you grow, okay? Thank, Thank you, you Cynthia. Thank you so much. Thank you guys.